Hey, hold for a second. Let me ask you something you have probably never truly stopped to think about. Why does life exist here? On this one small planet, floating in a silent ocean of endless darkness. We talk about life like it is normal. We wake up, we breathe, we dream, we survive. And we act as if existence was guaranteed. But it wasn't. Life didn't have to exist. Yes, life is not the default setting of the universe. Life is an exception, a miracle that shouldn't have happened, yet somehow did. Think about it. Look out at the night sky, billions of stars, billions of planets, and yet we don't see life screaming its presence anywhere else. No glowing cities on distant planets. No signals from intelligent beings. No cosmic neighbors waving at us across space. Just silence. A silence so deep that sometimes it feels like the universe is asking us a question, do you realize how rare you are? And that's why today, we're going to do something incredible. We're going to rewind the universe. We're going to break apart the story of existence. And we're going to answer one of the most important questions ever asked, why life exists on Earth, and why it doesn't seem to exist anywhere else. This isn't just science. This is a detective story 13.8 billion years in the making. A story filled with accidents, chaos, explosions, survival, destruction, and unbelievable luck. And by the time you reach the end, you'll never see Earth, or yourself, the same way again. So, ready, let's begin with the moment the universe set the stage for life, long before Earth even existed. Hey, let me slow you down for a second. Have you ever truly realized how ridiculous and unlikely Earth is? Not in a casual way, but in a how-are-we-here kind of way. Because when you really look at it, Earth is not just a planet. It is a statistical miracle wrapped in an astronomical accident, floating in a universe that doesn't normally give second chances. So let's start simple, and then we'll go deeper and deeper. Of all the places the universe could have chosen to spark life out of billions of galaxies and trillions of planets, it chose Earth. This tiny, blue dot. Earth is like that one spot on a massive dartboard that shouldn't have been hit, but somehow, the dart landed exactly there. Think about the basics, it's not too big. Not too small, not too hot, not too cold, not too close to the sun, not too far either. It is like someone dialed in the settings with ridiculous precision. The area where Earth is placed in our solar system is referred as the Goldilocks zone by scientists. This is the razor-thin region around a star where liquid water can exist. But you know what's funny? The universe doesn't care about being just right. The universe is basically a chaotic demolition site. Stars explode like cosmic bombs. Planets smash into each other all the time. Black holes tear apart anything that wanders too close. Space is cold, violent and unpredictable. And yet, somehow, Earth ended up in the place where life could take a breath. How? Well, let's break down the cosmic lottery Earth has accidentally won. Number 1. The perfect distance from the sun. Let's make this easy. Imagine a campfire. If you sit too close, your face burns. If you sit too far, you freeze. Earth is sitting at exactly the right spot around the sun's fire. Not because planets try to land there, but because gravity just threw Earth into the perfect orbit. Now here's the wild part, move Earth just 5% closer, and all the oceans would evaporate. The planet would become a second Venus with crushing heat and toxic atmosphere. Move Earth 5% farther, and the entire world freezes. It will become a permanent Antarctica. So, a tiny shift of distance, and life doesn't even get a chance. It's like walking a tightrope across a skyscraper with no safety net, one wrong step, and we wouldn't exist. Number 2. The right size. Let's use a simple example. Think of a balloon. If it's too small, air leaks out easily. If it's too big, it bursts. Planets are the same. If Earth was smaller, it wouldn't have enough gravity to hold an atmosphere. That means, no oxygen, no water vapor, no protection, and then no life. Mars is the perfect example for this, small, dry and dead atmosphere. Now let's see the other side of the story. What would happen if Earth were bigger, gravity would crush the atmosphere into something toxic. Just like gas giant planets where pressure is so intense that even metals would melt. But Earth, Earth landed right in the sweet spot. Just the right amount of gravity to keep an atmosphere, let water stay liquid, and allow breathing. So, not too heavy and not too light. Just right, again. Number 3, the magnetic field. It is our invisible shield. Now imagine if your phone had no screen protector. Drop it once, it's gone. If Earth doesn't have a magnetic field, life wouldn't even start. Because the sun is constantly firing deadly radiation, a river of charged particles called the solar winds. Without our magnetic field, Earth would be stripped bare just like Mars. The sun would literally blast away the atmosphere. But Earth has a molten iron core spinning deep inside, creating a giant protective bubble around the planet. It is invisible, but without it, the story of life ends instantly. Number 4. The Stable Orbit and Calm Neighborhood 
Imagine a house built next to an active volcano. One day you're fine, and the next day you will be gone. Many planets live in bad neighborhoods and chaotic star systems where they experience extreme seasons and constant asteroid bombardment. But Earth, it got lucky. Our orbit is stable like a clockwork. Seasons are predictable. Temperatures don't swing wildly. We're not being blasted by radiation from a nearby supernova. So on Earth, life had huge time, millions and millions of years, to slowly evolve without any interruption. Number 5. The right kind of star. This part is insane. Most stars in the universe are violent, unstable, or simply wrong for life. But our sun, it's a G-type star, steady, calm, long-lived and predictable. It burns slowly, giving life billions of years of stability. If Earth were orbiting a more aggressive star, like a red dwarf that fires giant flares every few days, the oceans would boil away. If it orbited a massive hot star, the star would burn out before life ever had time to evolve. So we can say that the sun is the Goldilocks star for the Goldilocks planet. And here is the craziest part, every one of these conditions had to be perfect at the same time. Not one, not two, all of them, if you miss one, any one, and life collapses instantly. It's like trying to win five lotteries in a row, with a blindfold, on your very first attempt. And yes, Earth has achieved this feat. According to some researchers, the estimated chance of a planet ending up as life-friendly as Earth is about, 1 in 10 trillion. I repeat, 1 in 10 trillion. To put that in perspective, that's like rolling a dice which has 10 trillion sides, and you hit the winning number on your first roll. So yes, somehow, Earth has hit it. There is another twist to the story which most people don't realize. Even with the perfect distance, perfect size, perfect star and the perfect magnetic field, Earth still wouldn't have life. Because Earth was missing the most important thing, ingredients. Life needs carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, and more. And none of those elements came from Earth. None of them came from the Sun too. So where did these ingredients of life come from? To find that out, we have to leave Earth behind, and rewind a few billions of years to travel to stars that lived, burned, and died long before our planet even existed. Yes, those ingredients have come from dead stars. Yes, every atom in your body was forged in the belly of a star. The stars that lived and died long before the sun even existed. Carbon in your cells, made in a star, nitrogen in your DNA. Made in a star, iron in your blood, forged in a supernova. Yes, you are literally made of star debris. But the universe didn't stop there. Those elements fell onto young earth, mixed in its oceans, and waited. Then the chaos began. Lightning slammed the oceans with electricity. Volcanoes erupted endlessly. Meteorites rained down. Hydrothermal vents blasted hot minerals into cold water. It was a planet-sized chemical blending. And inside that chaos, something extraordinary happened. Chemistry learned a trick. A trick that changed everything. A molecule formed that could copy itself. Not perfectly, not intelligently, but just copy. But that was enough. Because once something can copy itself, evolution can begin. Mistakes get made. Some survive. Some fail. Patterns repeat. Complexity increases. That was the moment chemistry turned into biology. So, life didn't begin with creatures. It didn't begin with cells too. It has begun with repetition. A pattern trying not to disappear. And you know what's crazy. The universe didn't care whether that pattern survived or not. But Earth did. Which brings us to the next part of the story, that moment the planet itself became a bodyguard. So life has begun on Earth but it was fragile. One solar flare, gone. One asteroid, gone. One big freeze, gone. The early life needed protection. And that's exactly what Earth gave it. Earth has become a guardian. Here's how. The magnetic field acted as a shield deflecting deadly solar radiation. The atmosphere, by trapping warmth like a blanket, letting liquid water stay liquid. The moon, stabilizing our tilt, preventing chaotic climate swings, creating tides that mixed early oceans. The Jupiter, as a giant that swallows asteroids. Yes, without Jupiter, Earth would have been hit by hundreds of asteroids. It's almost suspicious, right? Like everything lined up so life wouldn't just begin, but would thrive. With this protection, life grew into microbes. Microbes became cells, cells became creatures, creatures became conscious, and one day, consciousness looked around and thought, why am I here? So let's answer it. Why does life exist on Earth? Science says, because conditions aligned in a way that is unbelievably rare. But the deeper, and almost poetic truth, life exists here because the universe wanted to see itself. Maybe the universe wanted someone to witness its story, and that someone is you. Thank you for watching, check this amazing video on the gut feeling and subscribe the channel now.